So we are still doing inverse functions. This is part two. Uh, we had two strategies, swapping x and y and um, making one subject again or with a flow diagram. Uh, I've shown you those two strategies uh, in the first part. So now I'm just going to show you one of them, the one I use, let's say half x uh, minus 7. Okay, and I always swap x and y and then I rearrange the formula to make y the subject. Okay, but you can try for yourself. The question now is what is the inverse function, or right? we'll find the inverse function of fx. So I'm going to put the answer there in a minute. Now, how do I approach this question? Rather than fx, I'm going to say y again equals a half x minus 7. Then I swap x and y, so x equals a half y minus 7. And then I rearrange that equation to make y the subject again. So x plus 7 equals a half y. Yeah? So the minus 7 is a plus 7. Yeah? Plus 7 here to get rid of it. So plus 7 on the left side of the equal sign for it to be equal. And to get rid of a half, yeah, because you want to know what 1y equals to, not so much half y. Yeah, you can divide both sides by the coefficient, yeah, so divide both sides by a half, which is the same as times in both sides by 2, because a half times 2 then also is 1. So times in both sides by 2 gives me y equals, let me write it here, y equals 2x plus 14. Okay, 2x plus 14, the whole left side times 2. So the inverse function of a half x minus 7 is 2x plus 14. Okay, now if you uh, have used the flow diagram to find this answer, um, yeah, you get the same thing because that's the beauty of maths. Eh? This is the answer. Okay, now let's go to the next part for uh, another example and I'm going to add something to it. So see you there.